Hi, my name is Alan McKenzie. I'm a hard boot snowboarder from New Zealand. I've developed a geometrical way of thinking about snowboard binding lift and canting. Now this approach is most relevant to hard boot snowboarders, but also for squalers, mono skiers, and even soft booters. Binding lift is tilting the binding along its length so that one end is higher than the other. The meaning of toe and heel lift is therefore obvious. Binding cant is tilting the binding from side to side. Inward cant has the little toe higher. Outward cant has the big toe side higher. Ski boots and hard snowboard boots have essentially rigid flat soles. Is there any binding position where your boots would be naturally flat on the floor in both directions and your joints all be in the neutral position? Well, yes there is. It's the position your feet would be in if you were having your hard boot cuff canting adjusted so that your boot soles were applied flat to a ski beneath each foot. Cuff cant adjustment is a whole topic in itself, and there's plenty of YouTube videos on the topic. If you've not had your boot cuffs adjusted like this, watch the rest of the video, but don't make any adjustments to the rest of your setup until you've had this done. Put the boots on with your normal riding socks and gently snug up the clips. Now stand so it feels like your legs are straight below your hips and your boot soles are parallel to each other. Get an assistant to measure the distance between the long axis of each boot sole and record that. That's between the middle of each boot sole. Move into the position and make the measurement a number of times. Take the average measurement, put your boots at that distance, check it's comfortable. Your feet are now at the flat boot sole position. Your boot soles are flat, side to side and fore and aft. Here you need no cant and no lift. This is your baseline. The long axes of your boots are now a known distance apart. We'll call it the zero cant distance. The short axes of your boots are on the same line, not one in front of the other. A key concept. Any movement of the legs from the flat boot sole position will result in the soles of the boots tilting. Extra leg joint movement will be necessary to get the sole flat again in the new position. By tilting your bindings appropriately, the amount of additional leg joint movement can be minimized. In particular, positions that try to bend the knees sideways can be compensated for. This reduces ligament and muscle tension and also fatigue, and leaves a greater reserve of joint movement to control the board. Skiers will shus in this flat boot sole position, but we don't ride snowboards in this position. Soft booters, hard booters and squall riders all increase their base of support by spreading their feet apart along the line of the board. To help them improve their ability to absorb the bumps and apply controlled edge angle and pressure. The monoskiers who clearly relish a challenge actually decrease their base of support by moving the long axes of their boots closer together. Hard boots offer limited forwards and backwards ankle flex and almost nil lateral tilt without the sole lifting or tilting off the floor. Knees are fundamentally a hinge joint and any attempt to substantially bend them sideways will result in you making an orthopaedic surgeon near you busier and better off. There's a good reason that splint has a whacking great hinge on the side of the knee. This approach to binding cant in particular aims to allow the knee to bend under riding loads in the way it's set up to do and to minimize any off-axis bending induced by differing alignment of the thigh and lower leg. Hips can move forwards and back, side to side, and round in circles, and a lot of their range of movement can be used in dealing with a less than ideal binding setup. Any binding stance is just the angles plus how far the bindings are apart, right? Well, yes and no. It can also be looked at by thinking about how far apart your feet are, side to side and forwards and back. To demonstrate how that works, I'm going to show you a series of diagrams. Here's a diagram of the flat boot sole position and a photo of my leg angles in that position. The lines running from side to side across the short axis of both feet in the diagram extend equally by the zero cant distance and have diamonds on their ends. The long axis of each foot 
is marked by red for the left and green for the right lines. To demonstrate the principles and keep some of the math simple, I'm going to move my feet to the two times the zero cant distance. This is actually also the relationship between my own measured zero can distance, 27 centimeters, and my stance length, 54 centimeters, binding center to binding center. So it's actually also a realistic setting. You can see how the angles of my legs change as the position change is adjusted for by lateral bend at the ankles. A rigid boot prevents almost all of this ankle movement. Now I'm going to rotate both feet from 0 degrees regular to 90 degrees regular stance in 5 degree increments. The reference lines will show you how this changes the relative position of the feet along the lines of both the short and long axes. The effect is to gradually increase the distance between the short axes and to gradually reduce the distance between the long axes. Until an ultimate squall stance is reached the long axes are aligned and the short axes are now separated by the stance distance. A key relationship is for that for a stance distance twice the zero cant distance. At 60 degrees binding angle, the distance between the long axes has reduced to equal the zero cant distance, i.e. no canting is needed by riders who set their bindings at around 60 degrees and have a stance distance twice their zero cant distance. They need only toe and heel lift because their feet short axes are one in front of the other. That distance, as can be seen by placing the well-known 1, 2, root 3 right angle triangle on the diagram, is equal to the square root of 3 times the zero cant distance. The triangle gives us the next part of the relationship. The ratio of the hypotenuse length, stance distance, divided by the adjacent side length, zero cant distance, equals the trigonometric function secant, of, in this case of 60 degrees, which equals 2. The secant of 0 degrees equals 1, and that means that when bindings are at 0 degrees, a stance equal to the zero cant distance will need no canting, and that's self-evident when you think about it for a moment. Here's a table of the secant function for 5 degree steps between 0 and 90 degrees. The secant for 90 degrees is actually infinite as a result of division by 0. Plotting the secant function for the binding angle shows us the stance distance relative to the zero cant distance for that binding angle that needs no canting. You can clearly see the intercepts at zero degrees binding angle and 1 and 60 degrees binding angle and 2. Secant is a hyperbolic function and rises rapidly over 70 degrees such that no reasonable stance distance at these and higher binding angles will not benefit from outward canting. Work out where your current setup is. Measure your zero cant distance. Divide your stance distance binding center to binding center by your zero cant distance. This is likely to be a number between 1.4 and 2.2. Find the intersection for this result and your average binding angle. If the intercept point is above the line, you will benefit from some degree of inward canting, below the line from outward canting, and on the line no canting is required. Here's the zero degree stance with hard boots on, without on the left, and with suitable and comfortable canting. See how canting restores knee alignment. Here's the 60 degree stance with hard boots on at twice the zero cant distance, with no canting needed to retain normal knee alignment. And here's the 90 degree stance with hard boots on with and without suitable and comfortable canting, again restoring knee alignment. That canting should not be an all or nothing quantity should also be evident. 
the three degree lateral canting inserts for F2 bindings lack the subtlety to really take advantage of this way of thinking about lift and canting. Recently a design has been developed for 3D printing customized F2 wedges allowing fine gradations and combinations of lift and cant. See the link at the bottom of the slide. This is the Bomber Trench Digger 3 binding with from left a 6 degree cant disc, it's also available at 0 and 3 degrees, the rotatable base binding base plate and a fully assembled binding. In contrast to the F2, the 5 degree rotation steps in the Bomber TD3 bindings and the 3 and 6 degree cant discs allow a gradual interplay of lift and cant as the relationships between the feet change, as the binding angles rotate. This is a screenshot from the Carver's Almanac Tweakomatic page, maintained by Scott Firestone. Scott also built this app, Twench Gear 3D, available for Apple and Android users to allow you to really tweak your 3D trench digger bindings. The center of rotation for the legs, as your feet move away from ground zero position, is the hip joint. We can estimate that distance by measuring from the top of the greater trochanter to the ground. These x-rays show the top of the greater trochanter is very close to the height of the center of rotation of the ball part of the hip joint. You should be able to feel your own greater trochanter as the next bone knob on the side of your thigh below the edge of your pelvis, ilium in the x-ray on the left. The distance from the hip joint to the ground is the length that will determine the canting angle required for a rider of any size for any change from that rider's zero cant distance. If you snowboard or squall, how far apart along the board should your stance be? A comfortable and well-balanced distance for you, allowing you a wide range of movement. Longer distances up to a point provide more ability to absorb shocks along the board's direction of carving. Appropriate lifting and cant will allow longer but still comfortable and functional uh, stance distances. As an example of how this plays out, I'm 182 centimeters tall. My greater trochanter to floor distance is 95 centimeters. My zero cant distance is 27 centimeters. My carving snowboard stance is 54 centimeters, approximately 0.57 times my trochanter to floor measurement. My average carving snowboard binding angle is 60 degrees and I ride with zero degrees of splay. I don't need canting. I ride with six degrees of front toe lift and six degrees of rear heel lift. The toe lift in the front of the boot pretty much cancels out the approx six degree heel to toe slope in my UPZ RC10 boots and keeps me nicely balanced within my base of support with plenty of capacity to absorb shocks by further knee and hip flexion along a completely aligned hip, knee and ankle joints. If I set my bindings to zero degrees in the same stance distance, I will benefit from some inward canting. Calculating the angle change for that distance and my hip to ground length, I should need about eight degrees, but I actually only need about five degrees of inward canting to feel comfortable and with even cuff pressure on the inside and outside of my calves. For a bomber 6 degree cant disc, this means the disc axis and binding plate axis are about 60 degrees offset. At 6 degrees of cant, with 90 degrees offset, I start to feel knock kneed. At 4 degrees cant, with 40 degrees offset, I feel bow legged. Calculation gives you an idea of the cant angle, but comfort should be your final decider of what is the appropriate amount. If I rotated my boots to the duck foot position at plus 15 and minus 15 degrees to reduce boot overhang, I feel most comfortable when I set the cant disc axes to maintain 60 degrees of offset from the binding plate axis, that is plus 75 and minus 75 degrees, to achieve the same degree of canting and about three degrees of toe lift on each boot. If I just rotate the binding plate, the cant angle changes and I notice discomfort in my knees. Again, people are now 3D printing custom cant lift wedges for soft boot setups as well. If you can get your hands on a set, the Bomber Power Plate system provides the same range of cant and lift options for soft booters that Bomber's trench diggers provide for hard booters. At the time of this video, Bomber has recently changed hands and power plates are out of stock. 
Ryan Napton reviewed bomber power plates on his YouTube channel. He set them up without knowledge of the information in this video. And a disclaimer here, I have no link of any kind with the bomber company. I just like the design features of their equipment. For squall riders, it should now be very clear toe and heel lift would be helpful, but also outward canting is needed for optimal binding setup. This will allow greater stance distances, providing a longer, more stable base of support, and greater comfort and function because of less muscle tension, especially around the knees, at all stages of riding. Squall riders with outward canted bindings should no longer need the lateral flexibility of bail bindings to reduce their muscle tension, and might benefit from the lateral stiffness of intec type bindings to precisely exert edge pressure, and from the resulting ability to unclip their rear foot during lift rides and simply click in at the top. If I set my bindings to a 90 degree squall stance, I need 6 degrees front toe and rear heel lift, plus approximately 5 degrees of outward canting for my hips and knees to feel comfortable. I've made 3 degree wedges to go under the heel and toe pieces of my TD3s to be able to produce this combination using the 6 degree trench digger cant discs that Bomber currently makes. The original design Bomber squall cant discs had a fixed slope axis and produced only 0 or 6 degrees of lift and no canting. Whereas a 9 degree slope disc with a 35 degree offset angle would produce very close to 6 degrees of lift and 5 degrees of cant. To Bomber's new owner, Forrest, I hope you're watching this at some stage. The stance diagrams and secant graph indicate the direction of canting and lift that's likely to be beneficial to you. Comfort and experimentation will determine what amount actually suits you, but the diagrams apply whether you soft boot, hard boot, squall or monoski. And it applies as your zero cant distance changes as your body grows in size from a child to an adult. This is a way of making sense out of the variables of rider size, binding angle, stance width, cant and lift. Hoping this approach helps you ride better, be more comfortable and enjoy your snow time even more.